wish we had like background noise um, oh, for like, music, music. For, like 15 seconds, you know, have like a little. Da, da, da. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Brad gets it. Well, going we're here. Live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. Going live on, on Facebook. Facebook. Are we live on Facebook? We're live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. <laughs> So everyone, we have switched it up. We're not here for the real raw. We're here to have a choreographed dancing session. I'm totally kidding. Welcome everyone to the real raw, unblinded sales role play. Today, it feels like we are jam packed with fun energy. Not only that, we have some amazing humans on the line. I've just had the pleasure of meeting them briefly in what we call the green room. We're talking dolphins. We're talking Shamu. We're talking aliens. We're talking books. Bella jumped on a plane in the middle of this whole pandemic and she's rocking and smiling and we're here to have some fun and unblind the world to what they're not seeing about the fun and excitement of exponentially growing their sales outside of doing a little Facebook dancing and bringing a little bit of energy. So I am so pumped and excited for today because it's Mastery Monday and it's just incredible that every time I jump on these, first of all, half the people have no idea why they're here and they said yes. And second, they're like doing incredible things in the world, like straight up rock star individuals, just like crushing it, impacting, generating. And I'm always humbled, even though I come in with all this fun energy, truly humbled to be in the space with them, creating with them. And more importantly, I'm excited to learn what they're up to. And more importantly, have some fun with Sean Callagy. So as he gets on, like, I'm just curious, like Austin, you're like, the quietest and the stillest of the group. So I'm gonna tag you in right away. <laughs> oh man. Why did you say yes to being here? Like, who got you to say yes to this? Uh, David Gonzalez texted me yesterday and I was headed back. I went up to the mountains for a few days with some friends for a little Olympics birthday bash. And not for me, for, for one of my buddies. Uh, and I was on the way back and he said, hey, what are you doing at 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time? And I said, uh, what do you need me to do? And he, he mentioned this, I said, I'm in. Uh, sales is not my strength, so I'm, I'm loving being here with some sales pros uh, to learn today. So I'm super excited. Well, that's awesome, Austin. David Gonzalez, thank you to you, brother. You were our first ever draft pick at Unblinded, and we are not confused on why you deserve to be the first draft pick ever. So, Mr. Callagy, what is up, oh, sir? Uh, Valencia, how are you? I hear we have some rock stars. Uh, yeah, we have, like, Nick and Brad and um, just, like, Chris and Austin and Bella and just craziness. So how are things? Things are moving. Uh, we did the first official unblinded Facebook dance that I believe Brad just invented. We were dancing, we were singing. It was like, uh, I'm thinking of a play here, but I'm running blank. It was like Chicago meets unblinded. Like that's the energy of today. That's well, right. We, should we drop in? Yeah, let's drop in. So we opened it up. We'll do it again and welcome everyone. This is the unblinded real raw sales role play where we're gonna just jump right into what's happening in the world. So Sean, uh, what's present for you on this Monday? I believe this is like your 40th something episode. Like what's present for you as acceleration happens and we just finished the first unblinded draft ever. And we've gone live already on The Real Raw? Dude, we're, dude, we're live. We dance live, sir. That is absolutely extraordinary. So what's happening, everybody? Uh, I didn't even realize that we're like ready to go. So do we have Vivian to take us in? Because I am present to remarkable rock stars. I am present to influence as a superpower, connecting together, which is what we do for like the first 20, 25 minutes, where everybody gets to know each other a little bit better than they have so far. And then we're going to drop in and have some fun. So Vivian, you ready to take us in? Stay oh my with God, I'm so excited. There are so many wonderful people that are go-getting, that are just full of energy. And a lot of these folks here today know each other. So this is really a wonderful set that we have today. I'm so psyched. We have Austin Nedsley, who didn't know anything up until yesterday that he was coming on. And he is the founder and CEO of 2X. Former athlete turned engineer, investor, entrepreneur, and now author of the 27 time number one bestseller, Make Money, Live Wealthy. Founder of One Pursuit Investments, as well as the host of the Yo Pro Wealth blog and podcast. Amazing. Austin, how does one become a 27 time bestseller? How does that work? Uh, 27 different categories. So this was on Amazon. Amazon has a bunch of smaller categories. So it's, it's, it's not a book I would recommend. I would recommend the new book, uh, 67 <laughs> figures, which is not on Amazon just yet, but it will be out soon, but it was uh, 27 different categories. That's of what we saw. There was probably a lot more, but, uh, that was, uh, uh, Amazon has a lot of categories. So Austin, you're telling me that you were mm -hmm. in 27 different categories and, That's correct. Yeah. and that you have a book coming out that's better than that. 
Like that's where you're at in the world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to market this book. We just uh, uh, released it and it's only free plus shipping right now, but it's going to be out uh, uh, on Audible and Amazon here in a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to be pushing it pretty hard. So uh, I had a book marketing company, so we, we knew what to do with the book and uh, excited to see what we can do with this one too. Awesome. And that's something you help people do is market their books uh, as well, I'm sure. That's what we used to do. Not anymore. Uh, now we just work with uh, business owners to help them scale their business. Super cool. And you, as an athlete, what, what kind of athlete? Uh, free safety. I played college football. I'm not very big and, and scary if you see me, but put put some pads on and uh, I'm going to come flying into you if I can. That's awesome. Really. Where did awesome. you play? I'm sorry? Where, where did you play? Uh, Ohio, Ohio Northern University. Very, very cool. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here and super thrilled uh, that you made it. I've heard incredible things about you. So thanks, thanks for being here. Yeah. So Vivian, who we got next? We have Chris Reynolds. He's a high performance coach lifestyle entrepreneur, podcaster, and founder of The Business Method. He specializes in helping entrepreneurs optimize their productivity and performance levels through a proven system. He's interviewed over 400 successful entrepreneurs on The Business Method podcast, including people like Stephen Cutler, New York Times bestseller author, <clears throat> Jim's, Jim Rogers, former partner of George Soros, Laird Hamilton, world's top big wave surfer, John Lee Dumas, iTunes number one business podcaster, Casey Fenton, founder of Couchsurfing, and Ron Lynch, the marketing mind that took GoPro from 600,000 to 600 million. Boom. Chris, like, here's one thing I would hope for you. When you got to interview Laird Hamilton, I hope you did it on the Jaws break and Maui. Did you ever have a chance to be? Uh -huh. No, no. I was actually stuck in a co-working space in Lisbon at the time, but <laughs> it was just as good. It was just as great. How amazing is he, right? Yeah. It felt like I was talking to an uncle that I'd never met before. It was just, he's so down to earth and really just a genuine guy. Super cool. What's your relationship with the ocean, Chris? Uh, I swim in it sometimes. Okay. <laughs> not, not a surfer, not a, you know, not, not a I, no, I like the mountains better actually. Cool. And what do you like to do in the mountains? Uh, anything, camp, uh, snowboard, you know, live, all of the above. And, uh, yeah, Chris, and where, where are you from? I grew up in Missouri, but I've actually been remote for nine years, living abroad most of the time. Cool. And so, and you work with people on expanding their abundance, their lifestyle, like balance. Is that sort of your focus or I want to make sure I have that correct? Mainly like, yeah, high performance, getting things done, productivity, and a lot of neuroscience mixed in with that. Super cool. And if yeah. I ask final, final, um, where did your interest and passion in this area come from and to study the neuroscience behind it? Uh, I just did it like for fun as an entrepreneur for a really long time. And then I just decided to start. Well, I was helping people during that time, just like friends and people that I knew. And then I, I, um, I was traveling the world and I had, I was lonely. I was really lonely because I didn't have my like-minded tribe. So I created business accelerators and I did one in Barcelona, one in Rio de Janeiro, one in Thailand. And I actually did that for a few years. And then I started taking all the productivity stuff out of that and putting it online. So that's what I do now. If you need business accelerators, those sounds like some pretty cool places to do it. So congratulations yeah. on an extraordinary life. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And Vivian. We got some awesome judges for Chris and Austin. What's happening? We do. We have a very beautiful, and her name just, it's a truthful beauty, a raven beauty, Bella Verita. Ah, and I just love looking at her. <laughs> in, in her uh, Facebook page, she says she likes telling someone the truth because it's a lover's act. And I just thought that was a beautiful quote that she posted. She's a CEO at Align Sales Agency, nationally recognized authority on image consulting and mindset maker at Style Psychology. She became a top income earner in a networking marketing organization at the age of 19. Oh. She's taken her natural ability to sell and has used it to build multiple seven-figure real estate company and became a number one business broker in Nevada. Very nice. Bella, welcome and uh, super appreciative. And how'd you end up on The Real Raw? And do you have any idea what we're doing here? Um, I ended up here also via uh, David Gonzalez. I uh, had a chat with uh, Jared a couple weeks ago. And, and here's my, my first step into what's next. And no, I have no idea other than I'm going to be a panelist. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what to exact. I don't know what's happening, but here I am because I love to show up for a good time. 
All right, Bella, that's extraordinary. And where are you calling in from today? I'm in Austin, Texas. Wow, we've had a oh, run. More it's Texas, fifth, dude. Right, Fernando, this is like the fifth consecutive day. Texas takeover. So I sure. love it. <laughs> yes, Texas is everywhere. So yeah, like super crazy, uh, amazing. Um, yeah, so welcome, Bella, and on we go. We'll explain what we're doing here just in a little bit. So Vivian, who do we have next? Well, I figured I'd break it up. I was gonna go with Brad, but I'm gonna start with Nick because Nick is from York, from the UK, not New York, like he said earlier. <laughs> and he's the founder and CEO at Mandala Leaders, delivered leadership development programs with clients including EY, NatWest, the Cabinet Office, KPMG, NHS, and a group of startup organizations. He's worked in investment banking and management consultancy for 30 years. He has a passion for inspiring individuals and businesses to achieve their purpose and is a qualified business and leadership coach with the European Mentoring and Coaching Council, EMCC, and a member of the Association of Business and Leadership Coaches, ABLC. All right. Well, Nick, welcome. I'm about 100 feet from the Atlantic Ocean right now. So if I jump in and start swimming, I'll see you in a couple of days. So maybe you like meet in a minute. You know, it's only like 57 in New Jersey in the ocean, but would you be willing to meet me halfway, Nick? Uh, it's a bit too cold for me, Sean. I'd, I'd rather jump on a boat and sail across to meet you midway. How's that for a deal? That sounds great. Hey, uh, amazing background. Um, really thankful that you're here. I can't believe how synergistically this worked uh, that rapidly, so it's great to reconnect. It's a real pleasure to be here, Sean. Thank you so much for the invitation. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome, brother. And last but not least... But we have Brad Hart, entrepreneur, investor, trader, advisor, mentor, speaker, thought leader, and founder of Make More Marbles, mentored thousands of entrepreneurs and investors. He built a hedge fund that returned 106% net of expenses in 2013. And he's built, he was featured in Forbes multiple times. And his articles have been read over a million times. Sure. Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm also a recruit of David Gonzalez. That guy just knows everybody. He's pretty yeah. incredible. So uh, I'm just thinking that like the world of David Gonzalez has taken over the real yeah, world. Yeah, I think you must have just told him like, hey, get some people on my podcast and you really take it seriously. So, so <laughs> here we are. I'm really excited to be, uh, to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. I think that ultimately sales, I've started three companies now um, that have done well. A lot of them have failed too, but uh, three that have done well. And the number one thing that I keep coming back to every single year is how well do I sell? Simple, right? And sales is service and sales is the lifeblood of any business. If you can't make sales, you can't serve people and you can't have the money to continue on, right? So uh, I just, you know, urge everybody at home to learn as much as you possibly can about the subject and, and dive into it. So grateful to be here. Grateful to be here with all these rock stars and see some of my old friends again. And can't wait to see you all soon in person uh, after this all craziness subsides. And thank you for having me, Sean. Yeah, no, no and problem. Vivian. And listen, what I was just literally thinking, it's like 99% right. So first of all, where did your passion come uh, for selling, Brad? Where did that start? I got my start in sales. Let's see. I was probably, I mean, I was a bartender before I, I started sales. So I kind of had to work with people. I got really good at that. And then when a whole world fell apart, fell apart in like 2007, I was in New York City. Uh, I got a job cold calling on Wall Street. And I got to see firsthand what it's like to call somebody that I'd never met me before and asking them to buy something. In this case, we were marketing and selling securities. Uh, and I got hung up on thousands of times in a very short amount of time. Uh, so I got to understand really quickly what the differences were between capturing somebody's attention, telling a story that would hook you know, their, their interest long-term, and um, ultimately getting them to speak to a senior officer or a senior broker looked like. And then I went into real estate and I was able to, during a time when people were running out of the industry, uh, make a very healthy six-figure living for myself, uh, you know, in 2008, 2009, 2010, when I transferred into finance for full-time and started my fund eventually. Like, I just saw firsthand how important that was. And then fundraising, it came back again. Now with what I do with coaching, consulting, sales is like the core of what we teach. And it's like the key skill. If people don't know how to sell, they really, have, they really struggle bringing in any uh, appreciable amount of money long enough to get all the fun sales pages and letters and copy up and everything that actually works. Um, they think it's going to be easy to just flip, flip a switch and make money on the internet, but it starts with being able to talk to one person before you can talk to many. What was your sales like training philosophy other than the people that you work with on Wall Street? Where'd you go from there? Who do you like? Yeah, I mean, I've done a little everything. I've had so many great mentors over the years. I think the first one that was like a real training was Jordan Belfort because, you know, he was kind of in the periphery when I was growing up and Wall Street mm -hmm. and all that. 
Uh, so I learned his straight did, line did method. Did you encounter him, um, you know, before his problems or after? Like, was it? Oh, way after. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot younger than he is. So, um, yeah, I, I listened to that. After he'd gotten out of jail, he put out the straight line persuasion training, yeah. which was really great. Yeah. But it, it definitely, like, I've learned that there's so many different methodologies. And it seems like what the next one learns, like the next generation of salespeople learns, completely almost invalidates what the last generation learned. And it almost stops working as the market gets more sophisticated. So you have to go and like learn this theory and then this theory. And I, tr I hired like three sales coaches last year and I, I actually landed on a, on a style, I call it scriptless selling. The guy who taught it to me calls it reverse selling where you're not reading off a script. You kind of get rid of the training wheels and now you're just uh, behaviorally flexible, right? So I have to give credit to Cole and Brad and Eli and all the great sales trainers I've had that have taught me these skills because it's really been the difference between happy paying full customers and struggling and worrying about sales all the time. Cause it's a scary thing when you can't, you know, predictably and accurately uh, diagnose a problem and move people across the line. Yeah. So amen, brother. So could I, Brad and everybody cool if I drop in a little bit on Please. my background and well, actually let me say this. So we also have Fernando Valencia here. Fernando intro us. Fernando has taken to, his acceleration in business development in an extraordinary way. Um, Fernando had one of the most incredible months recently, hit 307 legitimate sales calls, not cold calls, not people not knowing, like legitimately scheduled calls with humans 307 times in a month. His persistence, commitment to mastery has been utterly extraordinary. So Fernando's who kicked us off today and uh, I'm super grateful for him. And what we're doing, and I'll throw it to Fernando in one second, what we're doing here is we believe what Brad just shared that influence is a superpower. And integrity-based influence used for good is how people change not only their economics, their time, money, and freedom uh, to have the magic, emotions, the contextual lifestyle that they want, but it's also how great problems are solved. So from the influence of Gandhi to the changes of the civil rights movement, I mean, these were because of influence. In fact, Paul Revere rides out one night and if he doesn't wake anybody up, like the dude who rode in the other direction and a dude did ride in the other direction, then we are uh, talking like Nick instead of talking like us. And who knows? Maybe that'd be better or worse. I don't know, but you know, it's what is. So that's what we're here to do. And we're here to learn from each other. And so this is like lunch meets dinner meets gamification in the space of making influence a competitive sport. And so whoever wins today, it's not like cutthroat competition. It's fun. It's like Jeopardy, like a game show, uh, maybe meets a little WWF and March Madness advances, should they choose to, in influ to influence us where this year we're gonna name the influencer of 2020. And we have attorneys on, best-selling authors, national public speakers, famous folks, franchisors, accountants that are on television, like every single walk of life imaginable. This happens to be the day of like super coaches all over the place for sure, but this day looks a lot different than a lot of days look. So we're looking into what influence with integrity actually looks like. And I'd love to talk to all of you some more, including Brad, because this is a dude who studies it. And you'll see what you think of what we're talking about here. So Brad and, um, Bella, Nick, Chris, and Austin, thanks for being here. And Fernando, any final words before we launch in? No, Sean, you encapsulated it. I was going to throw some fun energy and you hit it in there. So let's drop in and let's have this real wrong. All right. Fantastic. And who's our role player for today, Vivian? Oof. Sorry. It's Jacqueline Franchetti and she Oof. is already in red. Yes. I, I am dressed, ready for this. I'm excited. As I told Fernando and Vivian before I came on, I have my popcorn. I'm looking forward to this and, uh, you know, <laughs> Jack, Jacqueline and I met originally when Jacqueline won business mastery, uh, 2020, uh, in the Tony Robbins world for being such an unbelievable leader for an absolutely astounding cause. And Jacqueline, would you like to share that cause for now or just, uh, absolutely. absolutely. I head up the Kira Franchetti foundation. And the foundation is in memory of my daughter, Kira. Unfortunately, very sadly and tragically, a little over three years ago, my fiercely independent, beautiful toddler, her name obviously was Kira, she was taken in a murder-suicide by her father. Hmm. And her murder was 100% preventable. We were going through a custody case in Nassau County in New York at the time. And what happened to Kira, unfortunately, is not an isolated incident. She's one of over 730 children to be murdered by a parent while going through a custody case. 
And that number alone doesn't even tell the story because today in the United States, there are over half a million children who are scared to be in the home that they're quarantined in right now due to the failures of our family court system. They're court ordered to be with their abuser. The system is failing time and time again. But the wonderful thing is that there are ways that we can change this. I've already passed two laws, one state level and one on the federal level to begin to make a dent here. There's much more to come along the way. I'll share something here that I've not shared publicly yet. In a few weeks, you'll be hearing about Kira's law, which will be brought into action. I can't tell more about it just yet, but will change dramatically the landscape of custody cases. And there's hope on the horizon for this. And I'm very thankful for that. I miss my daughter every single second of every day. And I hope no one ever has to go through the pain that I've had to go through but there are changes we can make. Jacqueline, congratulations. I know this has been an unbelievable uh, force of your heart and soul to get to this place and have Kira's Law coming. So thank you for sharing it here. I appreciate you enormously. And uh, that lands for sure each and every time um, you share that story. So thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, and, and Jacqueline, could you share for a moment that in addition, you have some you know, real credentials in the space of human influence. And what do you do in the other part of your life uh, other than saving children from horrific situations? Yeah, for the past 20 years, I've been a corporate presentation and media trainer with Fortune 1000 companies, helping my clients to enable their message to break through the clutter each and every time they speak, no matter what medium it is, whether you're one-on-one -on -one going down in an elevator, pitching someone as I did and got a bill that's gonna be named after my daughter. Being on the media, whether it's on CNBC or something like this, how you can come across well, authentically, have some fun as we mentioned with this and get your message to land. There's so many messages that are being thrown at us on a daily basis, we're oversaturated with them, especially right now as we're at home listening to the news and everything else. How can we make you not just sound like one of a million that's out there, but the one in the million that people wanna work with? Awesome. Well, thank you for being here, Jacqueline. And so for everybody, so what am I doing here and why am I doing this? So, hey, my name is Sean Callagy. Uh, I'm the founder of Callagy Law and co-founder of Unblinded and the Unblinded Movement. And I'm legally blind. So I don't know if David shared that. But for those that knew David, I think Nick knows that, Jacqueline knows that. And uh, I was an athlete growing up. Uh, I share that background with Austin. I was captain of the Columbia University baseball team in 1992. I helped to go on to play professionally, and I was unfortunately diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, the same eye condition that Steve Wynn of the Wynn Hotels in Vegas has. And so I'm legally blind. I stopped driving about eight years ago, and I knew when I graduated from law school, which is what ended up happening because my baseball career ended due to my vision, that uh, when I graduated from law school, I got my dream job, and I realized the people who were free were the people, as Brad mentioned, that could sell and impacted your money, your time, and your ultimate destiny, right? So I was horrified. I thought selling was manipulative, horrible, terrible, and I was gonna leave the law, become a baseball and football coach and a high school teacher. Challenge was I was $100,000 in debt and going blind. So I decided that um, uh, to choose between happiness, right? And coach and teach um, and misery and money. And I found that that wasn't the truth. And through the work and mentorship of extraordinary people, coaching, training, some of it great, some of it okay, some of it quite horrible, and everything in between, that there was a way to do things differently. And I did something, a couple of unique things, just my own credibility background. I built a 40-person law firm within two years out of law school, a feat that I have yet to hear any other attorney, and I speak to attorneys across the country with some degree of consistency. I've never heard of an attorney doing that before or since, I'm not saying it pridefully, saying how difficult it is to not only uh, sell yourself as a 27-year-old attorney, but to scale and grow and provide enough work to employ 40 people. Uh, I currently have a 125 person law firm. I've one of only two attorneys in the country that have two top 100 national jury verdicts between 2014 and 16. So one of two out of 1.2 million in America, collected more than $400 million from insurance companies on behalf of medical providers that were not paid the money they were owed um, and launched Unblinded. We put 1,600 people in a room in 45 days this past January. And I live and committed to and obsessed with truth and why the media is able to create focal distortions and illusions for people, why incredibly successful, wonderfully skilled people can't sell and get their messaging out. And I think I'm preaching to the choir because that's what this entire crew seems to be committed to in life. So let's have some fun today. 
and let's teach each other, learn from each other, challenge each other, let's compete a little bit and be in service of people and humanity. Um, Austin, does that sound like a fair deal? That sounds amazing. Uh, awesome introductions from everyone. I'm just blessed to be here with you guys and appreciate it. And we are you, my friend. And uh, Chris, how about yourself? All good? Sounds absolutely fair. And I'm honored to be here. Thanks. I'm honored as well. Okay. So here's how it works, right? Um, and we know there's time. Like, so time is always like, oh, time, time, time. So I want to pre-frame this and say, it's one six minute conversation. Uh, one six minute conversation split down the middle into two three minute segments. So it's a pause. It's not two different uh, attempts at a hello to yes. So this is about hello to yes. It's a pause in the middle. It's like, hey, ring, ring. Jacqueline's got to take a quick phone call. I'll be back in three minutes, Chris. It's like pause and then continue. The first segment judges, um, and this is Bella, uh, Brad, and Nick, we're assessing, and this is our methodology. Love to hear feedback at the end on what all of you brilliant people think. Our methodology is that all of human communication first requires a disruption some element of opening the listening. Because as soon as we begin to step into a space of influence, we have default and we, we have neuroscience studiers on this panel, we create this uh, disruptive default no. It's like resistance is present. It's like we become Charlie Brown's teacher and the other person is the student here, want, 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 want. So how do we open the listening? People say, hey, create rapport, wonderful. How? It's a skill, like how do we create rapport? So the first section is measured on the creation of rapport, how much Jacqueline is moving towards you, is open in her listening. And second, so one is the opening of Jacqueline's listening, her seeing her future potential in you, like uniqueness and curiosity being present in listening. Second, is, is there something at stake for Jacqueline? Is there a pain? I think we can all agree that in selling, there has to be something that's painful. And it's not found uh, manipulatively, it's just found naturally, authentically, by loving, caring, and opening our listening for human beings. How do you do all that in three minutes? Not easy. But influence is a superpower. Sometimes we only have three minutes to change somebody's mind to change the world. Three minutes. Jacqueline might walk into somebody who is a senator, walk and go, hey, you got three minutes. What's your pitch? What does Jacqueline do to open the listening? And what does she ask for? You know, so that's the question in the second half. What's your heroic, unique identity? your brand, whatever you prefer to call it, USP, whatever you share, right? About you, your product or service to solve that problem that you exposed in the first three minutes and what's the yes you're ultimately seeking. So helping everybody because you've been wonderful, authentic, and I'm guessing you may not have seen the participant video yet with my level five listening telling me you may not have seen that where we go through about a nine minute segment of how to look into uh, preparing for today. All good. So in that preparation, I describe this. This is not designed to pitch and close somebody. It's not designed to sell and grab money. It's designed to demonstrate genuine connection and move to a yes. So this very simply could be a quick six minute encounter designed to a follow up meeting. And so it doesn't have to be money transaction. It could be talking about how to change a law. It could be anything that you want. And it's fun, I think, if you either attempt to sell something completely ridiculous that you don't care a ton about, it could be fun and interesting, like a jar of pickles, right? Or what I tend to think is much more exciting and interesting, um, and it could be anything you want, by the way, any yes, is something that's a yes you're really seeking. And maybe it's a yes for somebody to marry you. Maybe it's a yes for somebody to settle a lawsuit. Maybe it's a yes for somebody for a book deal. Maybe it's a yes to come into your program or to speak on their stage. So what yes is present and at stake for you that's fun, or just sell normally what you sell or anything in between. So with that said, and then you're gonna tell Jacqueline who she is, uh, I go back and forth. Uh, Austin, do you have any questions so far about what I shared? Uh, the pause, what's gonna happen there? Yeah, so in the pause, you're gonna be going for three minutes and then Jacqueline's gonna say about two minutes in to your building rapport and putting something at stake in round one, she's gonna say, hey, uh, you know, by the way, uh, Austin, I gotta take a call in about a minute. Hmm. One by a minute, right? So she's going to signal you one minute to go. And at that minute, you know, you'll hear it and we'll be like, hey, you can complete it. It's not a hard dead stop at three minutes, but it's like another 15 seconds to go or so I might say, then complete it. And then she'll pause for a phone call. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, Chris, do you have any questions? No, but it, it, at the end, where well, you just one quick question. You said you, we're going to tell Jacqueline who she is. And then you went to Austin. That, that phrase confused me a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. So yes, you're going to pick before you begin, 
Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to like do a little bit of a virtual coin toss in a second. Whomever's going to go first is going to then say, hey, Jacqueline, I would like you to be, and Jacqueline could be herself. She could be, um, okay. you know, a person that works for a company you're selling to. She could be anybody you want. So okay. you create the framework and that's why she's the role player. Makes okay. Sense? Cool. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So, um, and one more time, forgive me, Chris, we had a lot of introductions. Where are you, where are you physically today? Austin, Texas also. I said that. I did our Texas thing. Yep. Yeah. Forgive me. Um, and, uh, wow. So you're in Austin and you're dealing with Austin. So Austin, where are you physically today? I used to live in Austin and it made for a great pickup line when I was out at the bars, but, uh, I live in uh, Los Angeles now. All right. Very cool. So, uh, my very weak geography tells me that you are Austin from further away being in California. Is that a fair assessment of United States geography? Um, you're on the Atlantic somewhere. So yes, that, that is yeah, correct. I'm in Atlantic somewhere. I'm in New Jersey. Yeah. So amazing. So I'm going to put, so you're going to make the, the call. I'm going to put one or two fingers up under the table. So you think it's a one or a two I have here. For me? Yeah. A uh, two. It is a two. So you've won the toss. Here's your choice. You can go first in round one. And then um, Chris would have choice in round two. Or I'm sorry, you can go first in round one to retain your choice in round two. Or if you go second in round one, then Chris will have choice in round two to go first or second. So would you like to go first and retain choice or go second? And then he'll have choice in second round. Chris, you're up, my man. I'll let you go first. Thank you. All right. Amazing. Hey, so Chris, uh, so who would you like Jacqueline to be? I would like Jacqueline to be herself. Amazing. I All can right. Be. Jacqueline, are you ready? I am. Hold on. I'm just getting the stopwatch timed up. Okay. All right. I'm ready whenever so, you are. Jacqueline's right. herself. And I'll, I'll give one more quick question, Chris. Did you just meet Jacqueline today or have you met previously? I just met her today. Cool. Awesome. You ready, brother? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Three minutes. I'll go ring, ring. Jacqueline, you say hello. Ring, right. ring. Jacqueline, you go. Hello. Hi, Jacqueline. How are you? Hey, I'm hanging in. Things are crazy. I have a call coming in just a few minutes. What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to touch base real quick because um, I've heard some amazing things about you and especially the work that you're doing, um, you know, to pass laws for the challenges that you've had in your life. Um, but, but real quick, where are you based out of today? I'm actually in California today. Which part? I'm in SoCal. Are so you originally from there? I'm from New York originally. Are you? Cool. Do you prefer New York over California or vice versa? I am a New Yorker through and through and always will be. And, but I'm enjoying the California sunshine. Um, how, how, were you an entrepreneur in New York and California or just in California? In California. In California. Mm -hmm. How long have you been an entrepreneur now? Two years. Two, just two years. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like a new entrepreneur? You know what? Because I was working with the organization I was with previously, I was very heavily involved with things. So this was not a, a stretch. I'm actually, it was an easy, an easy road for me to continue on. I want to ask you, have you, have you in your business seen a significant amount of change in the past three months with what's going on or has it stayed steady and it's continuing to grow? Things have changed and I've changed with it. I've been doing a tremendous number of virtual sessions as a result, which as you would expect from what's going on in this market, I did a tremendous number beforehand. So for my clients, thankfully, it was an easy transition when we did that because they've been used to working with me on Zoom and Microsoft Teams and other places as well. So that, that was fortunate for me. The other thing I was able to do was start a resiliency program, which is based on my experience. So, and that's something that actually has taken off in light of the COVID pandemic. Can you tell me more about that? What is that exactly? Sure. I do have to jump off in about 60 seconds, just to let you know okay. quick. It's to help people not only weather the storm, but come out stronger on the other side. And it's the tools and tactics that I dealt with following my daughter's murder so that I could learn to move forward, honor her memory, honor the pain, but also come across and do things in a way and lead a resilient life. What's the, the biggest challenge with growing that program? Right now is getting recognition for it and people knowing that I have it out there and it's available. And how are you doing that? Right now through social media, as well as through my email list. And I just started a resilient new speaker series. Sean actually, you may have heard of him, Sean Calgary from Unblinded was one of my guests. Uh-huh. 
Nice guy. Nice guy. Great, guy. great panelist. I recommend you have him on the program too. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. And, uh, and he was one of my guests. We wrapped that up next week and we've gotten a tremendous number of people who've uh, seen it and been part of this and that's helped to raise visibility around it. And, and what's your perfect avatar for those people? These are people who are corporate executives. The people who are going to bring me in for this are typically human resources, communications, investor relations, uh, the heads of divisions who are seeing that their employees are getting a little disengaged right now because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And unfortunately, Chris, my call's coming in, so I'm going to have to hop. Okay. It'll pick it up in a second. Excellent job. So, Chris, what's present for you, sir? Um, what's present for me was just getting to know Jacqueline a little bit more about her and her business and what she's doing and what's important for her right now. Yeah. yeah um, I think Chris had beautiful tonality, um, real empathy, wonderful matching and mirroring. Obviously, there's a, an extraordinarily um, unique topic that was discussed today with, with Jacqueline and her fight for um, her daughter and children. Um, so there was, there was just a beautiful empathetic tone that was maintained. And, you know, I, I think it was a wonderful job. We'll get some feedback from the judges in a little bit, but I, I think uh, it was a really wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So um, Austin, how are you? Actually, let's go Jacqueline. Jacqueline, if you had to go one word, right? Just one word, one sentence, like one word for that encounter with Chris, what would your one word be? Caring. 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 Awesome. Very, thought, very authentic, very caring, and just wanting to know more information. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Austin, how are you? Excellent. All right. Would you, who would you like uh, Jacqueline to be? Uh, Jacqueline can be very close to yourself. I don't know enough about your business. I'll give you just a couple of details that may be uh, different. Um, so your revenue is about 500000 per year, uh, and you've got a small team of, let's say, five uh, contractors that you use. Okay, great. Awesome. And same uh, general type of business? Same general type of business. Uh, any, any type of service-based business will work perfect. So I love your mission and cause, which is what we'll cover. Cool. And Austin, final, final, uh, first meeting or um, previous meeting? Um, first meeting, uh, but uh, Jacqueline has applied uh, on our website. So I've looked up just a little bit about uh, your business and, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. So Jacqueline, are you ready? I'm ready. Austin, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, ring, ring, Jacqueline, take it. Hi, it's Jacqueline. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent, thanks. I have so another I, question in three minutes, but I definitely wanna to touch base with you. Excellent, excellent, yes. I looked up a little bit more about your business. I love your mission and cause, and excited to hear a little bit more about it here today. Uh, but first, I saw that you're in Southern Cal. What, what part exactly? Newport Beach. Oh, nice, I'm right up the road in Venice. Uh, please tell me that you've seen the bioluminescent waves here recently. I did. I did get to see it just yeah. a few ago. It was very cool. I, mean, I don't know if I've been to Newport Beach, but I was on the wedge and got to see it there. Nice, nice. Yeah. I've never even heard of it. I've been in SoCal for five years now. Never even heard of it, uh, but just saw it a, a couple weeks ago. And uh, as soon as I saw it, I was out there every night uh, just checking it out because it's a pretty special experience. Very cool, right? Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about your business. How how's things been going since COVID-19 hit? Things have been, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have wonderful clients and I'm very fortunate that they've continued to engage me. We're doing everything obviously now virtual. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I've gotten an uptick in business. For example, I was working last week with a pharmaceutical company preparing all of their executives for a global team meeting. Wow. So uh, as people transition from in-person to, to virtual, I, it was given a great opportunity for me and my organization. That's excellent. So you've shifted a little bit and see some pretty good opportunities with where you're at. Uh, what are your new goals? Like if you look as, at the rest of 2020, like where do you want to be? What do you want to achieve with the business uh, throughout the year? Obviously, I'd like to continue to maintain the revenue that's coming in, if not increase it. And one of the other things that I've launched in light of the COVID-19 pandemic is my resiliency business. And that's a program that I put together. It was actually already put together, Resilient You, Resilient Leaders, and Resilient Teams. But in light of the pandemic, I created a 90-minute virtual program that is specifically geared to help your team not weather the storm, but come out stronger on the other side. So where do you want your team to be 60, 30, 90 days from now? And would you want them to be re-energized and ready to, you know, full of new ideas, or are you going to find them behind? Mm. And the program is designed to help them you know, generate new ideas and come out stronger on the other side. 
That's beautiful. Well, a really, really impactful uh, topic for, for this environment that we're in. Is this already created? Is it underway? Where's it at? In, oh, already in done. piloted and done. And I do have beautiful. to have 50 seconds. Yes, it's 90 minutes and it's based on what I did. So I know it works. It's based on what I had to do after my daughter's passing, after Kira was mm -hmm. taken. It's the exact steps that I use to lead a resilient life, how I wake up and can smile. I can embrace the pain. You know, we're mm -hmm. taught that we're in a happy selfie world, but life is not a happy selfie. And mm -hmm. we're told to tough through it and, and power through. Instead, now you learn how to manage this and come out stronger on the other side. Mm -hmm. well, that's beautiful and thank you for what you do. Um, and I know you have to hop here in just a second, but real quick, what uh, inspired you to uh, hop on the call with me today? I've heard wonderful things from a couple of colleagues, and I understand that you've maximized their business. So I wanted to find out what you do and how you can help me. Excellent. Well, if you have to, to run, uh, we can reschedule, but I would love to keep the conversation going. It sounds like you've got some great momentum uh, there yeah. in place. Again, I believe in your mission. What's that? I want to sign a copy of the book. <laughs> you can get it. Let's get your address. And uh, uh, we also have events. You can come up from Newport and we'd love to have you in person too. Sounds great. That's super cool. Excellent. So Austin, so Austin, um, what say you in terms of how was that for you? Um, I'm glad I have a sales team uh, so that they can be in their zone of genius, which is beautiful. Uh, but I want to work with Jacqueline anyway, you know, it's like pretty cool what she's doing and, and up to. And uh, uh, if I can talk to people that have the same mission uh, and, and values that Jacqueline does, then, you know, it makes our job pretty easy. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, brother. And Jacqueline, we'll say one word and one sentence on that encounter. Authentic. It just comes right out. It, it, the, you know, I felt both from Chris and from Austin this, but it, both really, I did feel cared and, and I wanted to know more. So that is a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Great resonance, like deep presence for authentic, like, you know, all that was, that was very present for me. So now let's roll into uh, our judges um, to see what we're thinking round one. Remember, and, and judge, if you could write a score down on one to 10 before you influence one another, uh, scale of one to 10, what you had for Chris and for Austin. So you can text it to yourself or just write it down on something in front of you so we don't get shifting and changing your influence, 10 being a perfect score, uh, five being eh, like zero being running out of the room. Uh, we're certainly nowhere near any of those numbers for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's kick it off. Um, let's start with Brad. What do you got, Brad? And let's begin with Chris. What's so I just, I want to start with, I love you both. And I think you both did, uh, some things really well. Uh, Chris, I gave a five. And, uh, the reason I gave a five is because he was empathetic. He was charming. He was interested, but I think he kind of lost sight of the ultimate outcome. And he ultimately ran out of time before he could take the next step. So if it's like, Hey, I got three minutes. It's okay. We're going to go light on the rapport. And in fact, I'm not even a huge fan of rapport building on the phone because you build rapport through competency and certainty and clarity and having a, a path. You know, a lot of business owners, they don't want to waste time on the phone. So uh, by taking charge of the call, saying, hey, the, the way this call is going to go real quick is just, you know, since you only have three minutes, let's just get it set up, make sure this is a good fit and we'll, we'll figure out our next time so we can really expand and make sure that we have the time that we need or something along those lines and not be those exact words. Uh, would have really helped kind of frame the conversation and also take charge of the conversation. So it didn't become a, you know, hey, we're going to tell a bunch of stories and then run out of time. Uh, so that would be my only feedback. I think your tone was incredible. I think your, um, your delivery was amazing. The questions you asked were really solid. I just think, I don't think you got there. I don't think you really got to the ultimate outcome there. Right. So what do, have, uh, what do you have for Austin? I liked Austin's, um, did really well. I, I give him about a seven. Uh, I really like the way he presented himself. I think he's better at sales than he thinks he is. Um, just the way he's, you know, really natural at it. And he asked the right questions. He's obviously very smart and capable and confident. Uh, the only thing I would add, again, would just be to, to frame the call. You know, frame the, the purpose of the call, what the outcome is, get some agreement and buy-in on that so that, you know, again, in that short amount of time, you're not wasting it. All right. Awesome. We have a beautiful, direct Simon Cowlness potentially to Brad coming back in the future. So I'm, I'm liking the energy, beautiful um, integrity, because we talk about integrity-based human influence here, Brad. And a lot of folks come on and, and they're you know, really trying to be pleasing. So that was beautiful access of really supporting people, giving direct feedback. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Bella, what do you got? Is Bella muted? Yes, she is. Okay, Bella, get it unmute. 
Did it work? Okay. Yes, we have you. That definitely helps. Okay. Um, so I'll start with Chris. I uh, gave Chris a seven. Um, really, really loved the tone. It, just the energy of the tone like felt very comforting um, and instantly felt like, okay, I want to open up to this person. Um, the questions though did kind of seem a little bit like we went one, one direction and it was like, oh yeah, but wait, I want to, I want to do, you know, this and kind of like establish this over here and then, and then went back. So it was kind of like this, this a little bit, um, discombobulated, um, was the answer that I was looking for. And, but I really did appreciate like the energy and I really did appreciate like the question and I'm not actually knowing more, you know, about her, but I, I agree with Brad is like, you know, okay, where, where was this going? I was left like, okay, where, where are we going with this? Um, that was the big thing. Um, Austin, I uh, love and appreciate you as well. And I gave Austin a six. Um, the questions were definitely like on point, like business, business questions, um, you know, no, knowing, but there was also the part of like, you know, what was the purpose? And it, it all, it, to me felt, um, so business driven that there wasn't enough like care and connection in that in that rapport building part so that was the piece that was missing for me was it was it, it felt very logical um and we all know in sales like people buy for emotional reasons and back it up with logic so in that rapport really there wasn't enough emotion there for me all right awesome and bella thank you very much for that and nick what do you have sir well hi thank you both chris and austin for that i was really enjoyable to watch Chris, for you, I gave you a six. Um, I, you know, not, not without repeating other people, your kindness came through loud and clear. It was a difficult subject that you were talking about. You were empathetic and you were really building a relationship. And that was really, really powerful. But like others have said, though, what was the point? Where was the hook? What was the, the pain that Jacqueline was experiencing that you were going to solve for her? So let's, let's look forward to seeing that in the next three minutes slot. And for Austin, I gave you an eight. Thank you, Austin. Um, there was some empathy in the relationship building there. You talked about geography in common. You talked about the ocean in common. And you know that's something that I love, the ocean. So maybe that's the, the empathy there is, is using the geography and the ocean more than what it is you're gonna sell. And I was at a seven for you, Austin, all the way through. Then you got right to the end, the final few seconds. And that pushed the points up because you said, what inspired you to hop on the call? And at that point, you got Jacqueline telling you how good you were. And that was a great hook for the cell. So well done. Yeah. So awesome, Nick. Appreciate that very much. We're going to jump in here in a second. So, um, and I, I want to acknowledge uh, Chris and Austin, because sitting in their seats is a lot uh, more challenging than sitting in the opposite seats. And it's incredibly uh, courageous and wonderfully vulnerable to be in those seats. So Chris and Austin, thank you so much for um, your contribution and your vulnerability. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Yeah. And would it be okay if I jumped in with a couple of thoughts real quick? Is that some feedback or not even feedback, but something that we can look into a little bit? Is that something you're open to or no? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So um, I, I love Brad's feedback. I love hearing Brad give, uh, give his perspective. And um, I'm curious to see his perspective on, on this assessment. So I think the challenge, um, and, and let's drop in on what we believe in Unblinded. Um, we believe that it's not a question if you're good or not, uh, great or not. It's a question of where you are on the scale of mastery. And my best version of that rapidly is that in, in income in the U.S., you're in a 95th percentile at 150,000, 99th percentile at 400,000, 99.9 at 1.7 million, 99.99 at 7.8 million, 99.999, you're at $56 million. Why do I say that? I say that because if you're a 9.5, you're making $150,000. If you're 9.999, you're making 56 million. Extraordinary exponential differentials. So what does that have to do with influence? What I believe that has to do with influence is that's the difference between Oprah Winfrey and somebody who looks, sounds, IQ scores, EQ scores, a whole lot like Oprah, and just does a nice job working in office as an attorney versus being the greatest influencer and multi-billionaire woman in the history of television. I think it's microscopic distinctions. I don't think it's global major distinctions. So we, we operate in this, from that premise, right? First, in my experience, um, revamping jury consulting processes um, and having the top jury verdicts I have, in the first round of one of our um, most substantial cases, uh, we were told by the jury verdict consultants that had uh, psychologists on staff 
that we would be lucky to get $3 million in the case. And the jury verdicts that we got were sitting around three, four, and $5 million in the three rounds, the first three assessments, round one, from juries that thought it was a real case. With micro distinctions and doing it a second time with a different group and going through a different philosophy that we revamped, we ended up with 17 million, 27 million, and 37 million as the numbers that came back. And in the end, we ended up getting $27 million in the actual trial when the other side offered us zero dollars going in. Why did I just go through all those, those dynamics? I went through them because we, I believe that we often think in terms of influence that it doesn't work the way I just described. But I believe it actually does. That there's minor, tiny distinctions that equal extraordinary different dynamics. So the model that we've created, it's four steps, 10 indispensable elements, four energies. We're certainly not dropping into all that. But what I agree with from the assessment and love what Austin did is when he put the question into the immediate present. Hey, what brought you here? Now, where Brad and I may disagree in a three-minute call is how deeply go towards emotional rapport. See, I believe that fundamentally that emotional energetic transference is the source of sale. And so the question, and it's a great question that Brad brought up, is can we get there in three minutes? It's tough. So it's a gamble. Because if we try to get there in three minutes and we ask questions and we go too deep and it's wandering, then we're stuck and we got nowhere. But if we can get to from surface to real to emotional rapport, now we have something. So let's jump in and take a shot, right? So Jacqueline, how are you? You out there, Jacqueline? Hey, Sean, I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, awesome. So let's just, let's go and we'll go through the same uh, analysis. Let's use Austin. Like we've had a consultation, right? Um, you, you answer the form. We have a quick appointment. It's a super short one. You save a limited amount of time and we have three minutes to at least put something at stake and build emotional rapport. So ring, ring. Or actually, hey, Jacqueline, welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks so much. I got a call coming in three minutes, but I, you know I love talking to you. Yeah, no, awesome. So can I ask this question? Uh, what made you call and decide that you wanted to do this? Well, actually, Jared tapped me this morning. But, you know, everything that I'm doing right now, I wanted to figure out how I can go further, faster, better. And I know that you have excelled at that in the past mm -hmm. and I'm looking for any way that I can do that as well. Awesome. So appreciate that a ton. And I know you're up to like huge things in the world, but Jacqueline, remind me like, where like have things been? You know, I know you want to go further. I know you want to go faster, but even more, actually more importantly, why are you doing all this? I know you've had success. I know you've been through extraordinary tragedy. Why are you doing all this? So I well, started the- Did you feel that Jacqueline? Yep. Like it was a scotoma, right? We went somewhere. Did you think I authentically cared about the answer? Yes or no? Absolutely. And I felt that Chris and Austin did as well. Okay. And they all ask great open-ended questions, but your open-ended question is landing me right into where you want to take me. Exactly. So please go ahead. Why? So yeah, like why are you doing what you're doing? And watch my tone. Like yeah. why are you doing what you're doing? Tone trailing off, right? Authentic. And by the way, you go, so this is like some super manipulative sales process. No, it's not. I love people. So indispensable element number one of integrity-based human influence is that you actually love people. And if you can communicate with an Uber driver, this way, you can communicate with somebody cleaning a bathroom. I know we're in Corona times, but outside of Corona times, this way, now we have something to talk about. So it's not inauthentic if this is how we communicate with everybody, right? So if you're able to, in five minutes, have your Uber driver crying and feeling what Oprah said, I see you, I hear you, what you say matters to me, which is why she said she held the mic for 30,000 people, now we have something cooking. So Let's go back and we're only about 15 seconds in. We're, gonna, we're dropping in and doing some, you know, training points. But Jacqueline, so real quick. So yeah, like, why are you doing all this? So as you know, I have the Kira Franchetti Foundation. I have my company, Message to Momentum. I also have a 20-month-old daughter and her name is Haley. She's amazing. And I am juggling a lot. And I need to figure out the best way that I can maximize and do all of this. And like you talk in, you know, more money, less time, more magic. Yeah. So I'm hearing stress. I'm hearing maybe some internal conflict. Am I hearing that? Yep, definitely with time constraints. Yeah, and I'm hearing time, yeah, time blocking dynamics all over the place. Mm -hmm. But I'm also maybe hearing just a little bit, like which way should I be really putting my energy just with that pull with Haley and everything you're creating? Am I hearing that correctly? That's, oh, it's always a struggle, yes. And I try to give my energy 1,000% to all three things. Okay, I know we only got about a minute and a half left but let me just really get tight on this. So if everything went the way you want, 
I mean, people, Jacqueline, want a lot of different things. You know, some people are billionaires and they want like a, 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 an 800 foot yacht instead of a 400 foot yacht. What does it all look like for you though, if you have it all your way? Like what's that balance of this entire business dynamic if you have it all go your way ultimately? It's built and scaled appropriately so that all of these are moving forward and I have time to spend with my daughter. Awesome. And so you're looking for a certain amount of money and then mm -hmm. mostly for time freedom with your daughter, but certainly being fulfilled with the impact you're having both in changing laws as well as economics. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. And for my clients because my clients are very important to me. Yeah. Amazing. So can I share a little bit about myself after we come back from the break? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So Jacqueline, what was present for you? You know, it is still, again, the open-ended questions and got me to articulate my pain quicker right. and also got me wanting more because anytime that you can solve my pain, of course, I'm going to be listening and I want the answers. Okay. How did you feel about the authenticity at the, the level I was hearing you? 100%. And I felt the authenticity from Chris and Austin too, but all around. Okay. So, I mean, meaning my, my point was they did fantastically. My point was we put something at stake and yet you didn't feel like drag there. Did you, did you feel drag there? I guess Not at all. Not at all. All right. No. Brad, I'm super curious and interested in your very authentic and direct feedback. So I love what you're doing. I really think it's important to just be wary of time and just understand that every single conversation, every single part of a sales funnel, every single part of any interaction is meant to get from one point to the next point. Right. Okay. So if that next point is building rapport, amazing, right? Schedule the amount of time it takes to build rapport. I really feel strongly that three minutes is not enough time. Uh, so I would probably start the call with a few questions and say, Hey, I only got, I know we only have three minutes, but here's where I'd like to get to is I'd like to have some extra time to really dig in with you and understand who you are and what you're all about, how I might be able to help you to, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then I would ask some questions like, what is it that you're looking for exactly? But keeping in mind on the time with that minute left to be like, okay, when's the next time we can really connect and have 15, 20, 25, 40 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, but I do like what you were able to do in such a short amount of time. I just wouldn't take that shot if I knew I was going to miss, right? Because I, I need a little bit of time to expand into it personally. That's just how I feel. Yeah, I can't, I can't hammer somebody in three minutes. However, if it's only three minutes and I got to do my elevator pitch, I'll just say, okay, well, you know, I'd really love to connect you with you and, and ask some more questions and understand you a little bit more at some other time. But since I want to be respectful of the three minutes you have now, here's what we have. Would this be a value to you or not? And I would allow it to be opted into, right? I would do my 35 word or less pitch. I would say, can you, you know, is this valuable to you or not? And they could opt in or out at that moment. And then I could decide whether I was going to go forward with them or not. Yeah, no, amen. And I agree. If, if you're not sure you're going to get there and depending on where some of your skill sets are, yeah. then I- Some I, things I, you can pitch in two minutes. Some things you just can't. Totally. And we don't know what we're pitching here. So it's a little bit obtuse, but I think ultimately it's, it's effective to be able to do something in one minute and three minutes and five minutes, tell a story, get a little bit of rapport and emotional connection. Uh, but I don't like to force things. I like to know my shot and I like to take my shot accurately. Right. So here's something that I want to really be, would you give me, do you feel like stepping into something kind of interesting, cool, and maybe uncomfortable and disruptive? Because I think we agree on the points. I just, I think um, we're different in the style, right? So yeah. you might, you might align with like the Tony Robbins, the Oprah's of the world. I'm very like cut and dry, very clear. I'm a little more steel, maybe a little more blaze. You got a little more creator in you, perhaps to use a, a well-known entrepreneurial type test. I yeah. found that really great mentors give advice that's suited to people with the strengths that will take them to the, to the goal. They don't just teach from their point of view and what's worked for them because ultimately Warren Buffett didn't get rich like Tony Robbins. And if they switch strategies, neither of them would be rich. Yeah. Love it. So let me ask you this question, right? So agreeing with everything you're saying, this is not a challenge. This is not just, at all. No, I'm just, yeah. you know, again. Yeah. So how do you vibrationally feel? Um, let me actually, let me come back to it. Let me, um, what's this? Um, Bella, how do you vibrationally feel if I were to walk away from the screen and say, yeah, like, um, I think my sales call with Bella went great. Um, and the line was still open and you're like, I'm like, yeah, I think I really closed her. How would you feel about me if you heard me walk away and say, I closed you? Uh, I never like that language. It, it always feels, um, as a, as a woman, I, as I'm speaking from, from that, I, I, it always, it feels like, um, 
uh, like I've been almost attacked by a man. Like that's yeah. the kind of the, I don't, the, that, that's the visual I get, but like I can't source the, the feeling, yeah. but it feels there's like. A vibra- there's a vibration around the concept of closing somebody that feels that way for you. And I, I would feel, listen, I would, I would feel disgusted. I would feel repelled, right? Because even when I get people like, like um, cause I'm a sales agency and even when I get people like, message me of like, Hey, I want to be a closer for you. Like I, I, a lot of times don't even reply to the, the yeah. message. I just don't like those deals, not people. I agree. Yeah, exactly. So, so just, and I, it wasn't, that wasn't towards Brad. It was towards everybody collectively just curious about the energy of it. Cause I think our, our language around sales creates a vibration and an approach, which is why a lot of people I, I think hesitate when it comes to um, forming an agreement, as Brad was saying, closing the deal, right? Um, Where people avoid it because they feel like they're forcing, controlling, making something happen versus coming together where there's some mutual exchange of value that makes complete sense for everybody. So I just want to put that into the equation as we just talked today and people are going to see this. That's all. So does that resonate for you, Nick, as well or no? Yeah, absolutely. And particularly more so on this side of the Atlantic to be felt like we're being sold to or closed is just a straight no-no. Awesome. All right. So I know we're running a little long on time. So let's jump back in. Um, Austin, how's uh, this experience going so far? Beautiful. Uh, I love to see the different perspectives. And Sean, with uh, your session there, uh, I just got a really vivid picture um, that I didn't get from myself necessarily. I could really feel the goals and the pains just a little bit differently. So I think the picture that you created uh, with those questions and the empathy was really powerful. No, thank you. And it's just micro distinctions and you know, that's where we are. So awesome, brother. And Chris, how are you doing? Great. I've really appreciated the feedback from everybody. So thank you, every single one of you. And uh, Sean, appreciated your feedback as well. It's very insightful. Cool. Awesome. All right. So hey, let's drop in round two. So round two, um, Chris, it's your choice. Um, would you like to go first or second? I'll go second this time. Cool. Um, and in this round, um, Austin, you're going to go first. Uh, this is about now you solving for the pain that you, that Jacqueline had through your programs, your products, your services, and moving towards a yes. And that yes, as everybody's articulated, that could be yes for a more extended session. It could be yes for signing up for a program. Whatever the yes is you want to take it to from where we've begun. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Three minutes. Please continue. Uh, Jacqueline's back from a call. All right, Jacqueline, hope you had a great call. Uh, so before uh, uh, you stepped away, uh, we talked about getting you a copy of the book. So I definitely want to get your address here. Uh, and we talked about some of your goals um, from not only maintaining your revenue, actually increasing it. And you've got this new program out, which I'm super excited uh, to hear about. And, and again, with the timing, there's a lot of potential there, but there's also a lot of moving pieces right now. So if you simplified things down, what would the ultimate success for uh, be for you over the next, let's say six months, if you had to simplify it down to your top goal? Absolutely. So what I would like to see is actually the resiliency part of my business become 50%, if not more of my business. Hmm. And what is it now? It's probably more about, because I just launched it. So it's about, let's say 5%. Okay. I really want to see that grow exponentially right now. I think part of the problem is a lot of people are, you know, just trying to survive the pandemic right now. And I'm trying to integrate with the message to help solve them. But there's a lot of noise in the background. Yeah, yeah. And who's your ideal a customer for this? Fortune 1000 companies and larger organizations. And what's the biggest challenge with, with getting into uh, these Fortune 1000 companies right now? With the, the current environment, are they holding off on budget uh, uh, expenditure? Are they tough to even get a hold of? Tell me a little bit about that situation. Number one, a lot, as you all know, uh, probably from your client base, there's a lot of budget freezes out there right now. Mm-hmm. So that's hurdle number one. Um, hurdle number two is getting people on the phone because they're, they have so many, especially for HR right now, people are being dragged in 17 different directions and HR is trying to figure out how to get people back to work and the new standards and things like that. So there's a lot of demand on their time. Mm-hmm. And how does your offering really support them? I mean, is there a direct ROI that you can uh, uh, communicate to them? easily because when you look at any organization 30 percent of your if you're looking at a fortune 1000 company for example for example 30 percent of your employees are looking to leave at any given time hmm. 70 percent are disengaged when you tack on trauma that's made it even worse which means that 
your employees are not engaged. They're not generating new ideas. They're not coming forward with new ways to do business. And this is a time when you need that to happen. And this is to help them unlock that potential. 30 seconds to go. Yeah. Um, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into your time. Where's your time and energy going? Are you uh, working on growth oriented activities or uh, exactly where is, is your time and energy going? Growth oriented activities, but I also run a foundation as well as have a child. So I have, oh, and, you know, obviously we're in a pandemic. So there's, there's a lot of demands on my time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in your team, how many people are on your team? It is me, myself and I, all three of oh, us. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's big opportunity, uh, but for you to really, really get this uh, resil resiliency program off the ground, uh, we've got to make sure to have the right strategy and approach. One thing I'd love to share with you, uh, like I said, I'm going to send you a copy of the book and uh, I'll cover the cost of that. Don't worry about it. I think you'll get a ton of value out of that. But what I'd love to do next uh, is do what we call a seven figure audit. This is a deep dive analysis of where you're at where your time's going, and really about your strategy and your approach to get into these Fortune 1000 companies to make sure that you have the right approach, that you have uh, what we call an irresistible offer. And I'd love to do that for you free of charge. Uh, typically, we offer this for $997, but you have a, a great mission. You've got a, a program that's going to impact a lot of people. I'd love to do that for you and uh, take things a little bit uh, deeper to understand your business and, and your goals and really start to map out a plan with you. Does that, does that sound fair? Great. Let's start talking more about it. All right. All right. Very nice work. How did that feel for you, Austin? Uh, whew, that was that was rough. <laughs> not easy, right? Listen, great vulnerability and courage to do this. So thank yeah. you. Not easy. But uh, so how was it feeling? What was like if you had to say one word feeling, top feeling? Uh, did you ask me again? I'm sorry. Yeah, like what would be yeah. one word um, you're feeling? I would say choppy. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and Jacqueline, what's one word from you? Yeah, again, Austin just comes across so authentic each and every time that he speaks. It's, you know, he's really, he's, he's coming from a place from the heart when he's doing this. I don't feel like he's coming for me like, okay, you're my next client and I got to get on another call. It, it, it's authentic that continues to drive him and comes across so well. Yeah. I would say a thought, um, maybe we'll round it back after the judges. So, so outstanding job. Uh, we'll talk about a thought after. Uh, Chris, are you ready to go? Ready to go. All right. Three minutes. Ring, ring. Take it away. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jacqueline. How are you? I'm doing great. You know. How was the last call? Last call, I, there is a lot going on. A lot going on. <laughs> well, I don't want to waste too much of your time because I know you're busy. But um, what I wanted to ask you first, Jacqueline, before we continue, what made you decide to get back on the phone with me? You know, I, I really wanted to hear more about what you have and what you offer. So I'd love to dive into that. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of in a similar boat that you are. So my partner and myself, we created a, a service for entrepreneurs um, right as COVID changed. So we had our Q1 goals and we were headed towards those. Actually, we were just so spot on with them. And all of a sudden, boom, the landscape changed. And so what I did is like, I, I took some time and I stepped away and I thought, you know, I meditate quite a bit. So I thought to myself, um, what's a really valuable service for the entrepreneurial world right now? And uh, we created, uh, it came to me and I said, we created, if we create masterminds for entrepreneurs that are struggling, um, I think it can help them out. So we actually did this free for five weeks. It was like a hundred dollar deposit that people could come join us. And then if they showed up, then they got their hundred deposit, hundred dollar deposit back. And, um, and so at the end of it, we were trying to figure out, well, what are we going to do after these rounds of masterminds? And so my partner, he's actually former special forces for the Israeli army. And he spent 10 years in counterterrorism. And like the mix of him and myself facilitating a solid mastermind for entrepreneurs was a really wicked combination. That's the feedback that we got from people. And so we took out of the 63 people that were in those masterminds, we took uh, 15 and invited them to a type of all-star mastermind. So our, our goal, I remember you mentioning that it's really 
key for you right now to build teams, to build your team for your product that you want to scale, and also to help your clients build teams. Our goal was to build all-star teams based on my partner's knowledge of using of how to build teams in special forces and my knowledge of how to focus and get things done and stay on top of goals. And so we created these masterminds and um, they just started a couple of weeks ago and they've been a hit. And it's been really great to put these really fascinating entrepreneurs together and listen to them roll. And I'm just curious. Have, in about 40 seconds. Sorry. Okay. They, okay. Um, have you, are you a part of a mastermind now? I actually just rolled off of one. Yeah. But something called the unblinded movement. I've heard that. I've heard, I've heard good things about that. Pretty cool opportunity to merge ecosystems. Yeah. Um, have you, so you've done masterminds. Do you do those regularly? I just rolled off of one. I do enjoy them. Yeah. Just curious, Jacqueline, would you be interested in setting up a call with my partner and myself and having a, a dive into seeing if this is something that could benefit you and your team and where your goals, where you want to go for 2020? About who's in them and what, you know, what the topics are and how they drive and how you run them. Sure. Sorry, cut out for a second. Could you repeat that part again? I'd love to hear more about who's involved in the masterminds, how often you're meeting and what the topics are. Okay. Are you free Tuesday at 3 p.m.? Tomorrow at 3 p.m. We're having a phone call, I think. Okay. We'll send you a Google link and we'll have you set up and ready to go. All right. Sounds good. Looking forward to it, Jacqueline. All right. Chris, how was that for you? It was good, but also like I'm, a, I'm, I'm big on connection. And so it felt a little push for me, you know, with the time limit. But uh, uh, I felt like I, I rambled on just a bit too much on the product and service and wanted, to, wanted more time to connect with Jacqueline that, that I didn't get to. Yeah. I, I mean, Chris and Austin, both of you have so much authentic like love and care and this um, just peaceful energy about both of you. It's like omnipresent. So like that, that remains for sure. So beautiful Thank work. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's drop in with the judges and I'll have a couple of thoughts about what might, you know, support um, how we could balance speed, um, you know, emotional energy transference in kind of short windows and still maintain our integrity, our love for people. Mm -hmm. So uh, this round, Nick, um, please kick us off. Nick, what do you got? Thanks, Sean. Be delighted to uh, kick you off. Uh, just going through them, starting with Austin, thank you for that. Again, lots of empathy, lots of good questions, lots of getting to know this potential client, sharing your book so they've got some other uh, understanding of your credibility, your experience, and your knowledge is all good. But that's not what you're selling. Uh, and, and what I didn't get to quite understand is what it was you were trying to sell and how you're actually going to sell that. So there's a bit of a miss at the end for me. Chris, thank you. Again, great questions. You, you, you were really focused on building rapport, really focused on building a relationship there. And, and actually, when the whole conversation switched, when Jacqueline asked you a question about, you know, what is it that you do? And you went through your story of the last five or six weeks and how you've changed your business you brought your business partner in there with the Israeli special forces, which just says resilience and it says action and everything else as well. So that's a good credibility as well. And you know, I think your purpose was to sell a follow-up call with your team and you achieved that. Well done. Yeah. And what did okay. you have for us, Nick? Uh, I had uh, uh, 7H, 7H, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, Brad, what do you have, sir? So uh, I'll start with Austin because he went first. Austin, great job, by the way. Um, it just comes across like, you, you get it, you're with it, you, you know what questions to ask, you know exactly where to dig, you got clarity really fast. I think that's just such an important skill, especially with business coaching, um, while maintaining that authentic connection and vulnerability. Like both of you guys have incredible uh, emotional um, intelligence and connection and authenticity, and it really shines. Uh, honestly, I, I think you did great. I think your pitch was smooth. I think it made a lot of sense. You offered an irresistible offer you priced it properly where you're like, Hey, this is normally 997, but we're going to do this for you for free. Like who's going to turn that down, right? There's no obligation. You know, you come across as smooth and, and trustworthy and, and, you know, even a little bit vulnerable, which is, I think works in your favor. Um, if you were going to be doing sales a lot, that would naturally like the things you're worried about would naturally just get smoother and smoother and smoother and you wouldn't stumble over words and things like that. So honestly, I think, Technically, everything you said was perfect. It's just a matter of doing it more if you wanted to get really good at this. And that would just even itself out. You get more comfortable, more confident, 
and you would maintain that uh, level of efficacy that you already have, but it would just get stronger and stronger. Uh, you're already past that point in your career where you need to be on the phone selling. So it's not as important, but um, I think people should really listen to you on your sales team and just hear the things that you're saying because the questions are so quality uh, and you know exactly where to dig. So awesome job. I give you a nine on that one um, with the, the one point only being just doing it more. I think you're stronger than you think you are. And uh, I think as a leader, it, it's important to see you know, uh, if I was on your sales team, I'd want to see that you can do it too once in a while. So that would, that would really help. Uh, that would be my only feedback. With Chris, uh, a lot better. I'm giving you a seven this time. The only thing that really tweaked me a little bit, like my spidey sense kind of jerked, was when you first kind of went in and you said, we were in a similar boat to you, or we are in a similar boat to you. You're putting yourself at a different position there. You could say you were in a similar boat and you solved this problem, but that immediately put me off because I'm thinking to myself, why would I want to work with somebody or, or learn from somebody who is in the exact same place I am? Just the wording, the phrasing, it was just like a minor thing, but it really got my back up. And I'm like, why did you say that? Good so that was one thing I would, I would just shift slightly. It was just like, hey, you know, when you frame the story, it's like, hey, we were in this situation. This happened, this happened, this happened, and we, we came around it. I think it could work against you to try to connect too much on the rapport level at that level and be like, hey, we're in the same exact boat you are. Why am I hiring you, right? I want some authentic, uh, authenticity and vulnerability, but I also want leadership and authority and somebody who's an expert to help me guide guide me to a place I haven't been yet. Uh, yeah. So that's just a minor thing. Um, your, your pitch, I think, just got a little long-winded. I think you could tighten it up just a little bit. 35 words or less, especially in this kind of thing. It's like, hey, this is what we have. This is what we're offering. Kind of like, you know, learning from what Austin did. It was just so tight and well put together and so clearly valuable that she had no choice but to say, yes, why not? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest that time. Because that's really what we're asking for. It's an investment of further time in order to flesh out a solution that could potentially benefit both of us. Awesome. So uh, excellent feedback, Brad. And so we had a nine and a seven, correct? That's right. Yeah. You both got a lot better really quickly with feedback. So I just want to, I want to applaud both of you for being uh, open to that and uh, increasing your, your skills in real time. It's really awesome. It's not that none of you guys have heard this stuff before. It's just bringing it all together in one short segment. And I know it's not easy. So I, I commend you both. Yeah. Beautiful depth of feedback, Brad. Excellent. Hey, um, yeah. Bella, what do you got? I'm sorry. Um, Jack, I just want to point out something in the chat. Austin just mentioned he has to jump off pretty soon because he has another. Okay, so let's let's wrap. So, Bella, what do you have? Yeah, so I'll keep my mind short because Brad always gives amazing feedback. So I appreciate that because I I learn a lot. Um, and so I'll start with Austin. And I gave Austin um, first of all to be in you guys' seat. Amen to you. Like, I'm nervous for you. Um, so Austin, I actually gave you a five on um, this particular round. I thought you did, a, your question asking is amazing. Your authenticity is incredible. Um, and you asked amazing questions. The piece that was missing for, for me at the end, like you made an incredible offer, um, but really tying it to um, the pain and like you asked all these great questions around her goals and then didn't repeat them at the end. I think you repeated like one or two, but didn't like bring it home at the end. And it was like, it was so amazing. And then it was just like, the, right at the end, to be able to, I thought there was that opportunity to really tie in what she said and repeating some of her words and some of her goals uh, tied directly to her ROI and where she wanted to be. So, um, and then Chris, I gave a Chris a three on this round. And that was because I didn't know where you were going. Like, if it, it, like, I loved that you, like the first question you asked, like, I love that you implemented the feedback that was actually given to Austin of, of, you know, why did you get on the phone? So I loved that you started with that question um, and remembered that feedback, but then it, it felt like you like went right into telling a lot and I didn't know where you were going with it. And so I, 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 I my brain was like, okay, where, where is it that we're going? Um, but then, um, and, and then, but then in the end, you went to like, you know, starting with like, well, what's important to us? And I thought you could have started with that, which then would have tied in everything that you said after. Um, and, and you did make a great ask at the end, so. All right, thank you, Bella. Bella, like uh, channeling her inner Simon Cowness as well. So <laughs> direct this, well, thank you, Bella. Austin, I know you gotta jump. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Any final thoughts? If somebody's like, hey, should I like jump in and be a participant on this crazy real raw, what would you share? Absolutely. Uh, 
uh, again, from a growth opportunity standpoint, like the, the feedback. Uh, and I think that's one challenge that we have is, is being the leaders of our company. We don't get enough, enough feedback oftentimes uh, outside of coaching. Uh, so having this uh, type of thing, I'm going to figure out a way to do this more often because it's just really, really special. And it's cool to see other people and then you go yourself and have that all happen in one hour. Uh, it's pretty special what you're doing here. So appreciate you all. Appreciate the feedback very, very much. Uh, I'm going to get this recording as soon as it's out to our sales team uh, to have them go through and see some of that uh, and really, really optimize what we've got going on. So very, very uh, grateful for all of you and uh, great job on putting this together. Yeah. And thanks, Austin. As you jump, final, final, thank you so much. Did a beautiful job. I think as you deliver your heroic, unique identity, that's what we call it here, you have incredible stories that are wildly relevant for these people. I mean, best-selling books, other incredible accomplishments, having you share directly how you found acceleration in life and having that come forward in the stories you've told about both yourself and other people, I think makes that pop for everybody. And, you know, look forward to talking to you. I know you got to go. So thank you, Austin. Thank you. Bye-bye. I loved your clothes, Austin. I thought your clothes was awesome. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use that a little bit, so we'll start using it more based on your feedback. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye now. Thank Bye, you. Austin. Great work. Thanks. Hey, so Chris, uh, any final thoughts from you, sir? No, I really enjoyed this experience. It was really great. Um, I enjoyed connecting with Jacqueline, and I, all the feedback was spot on, and I appreciate that. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, lo loves you being here. Uh, Brad, how about yourself? How was your experience, and what's, uh, what say you about the real raw? I love this. This is really fun, Sean. And I have found in all the sales training I've done, this has been the most effective thing is like getting actual real time feedback and like role playing is just so important. So I appreciate you seeing that and making it available to people and doing it in kind of like a little mastermind format where everybody can benefit from it is awesome. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate you having me and, and letting me, uh, you know, just be the curmudgeon in the group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, listen, you got skills. You got mad skills. And so we'd love to have you back if you want to participate, like for real. Like you you're unquestionably skilled and at a very high level of mastery. So love to have you back and fantastic job. Love David Gonzalez for it. So thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Bella, how about yourself? What say you? Should somebody come judge the real raw? Absolutely. 100%. It was super fun. I learned a lot. Like I just, I appreciate like hearing all the feedback and kind of echo what Brad said. It's just, it's a re really great opportunity to learn and, and to be in, you know, real time feedback. And man, I feel nervous. Like I feel nervous for Brad too. <laughs> like, I'm like, woo. I was like, it, yeah. Well, that's why it's real and raw. And Bill, we love to see you sit in one of those seats at some point. If you want to. I'm back next week. Boom. This time next week. I was back. So thank you, Bella. Have a beautiful day. Nick. So Nick, I'm like, I can't see, but Mona's looking at the window and she's saying she doesn't yet see you pulling up on shore. So we'll wait for you tonight to see if you come across the pond. But until then, what say you about the real raw? Well, I'll be across the pond when I'm allowed to get across the pond, but uh, that's been fantastic, Sean. And let me tell you a very quick story. Today I had a sales call from a coach trying to sell to me and he took 40, 45 minutes to not achieve the sale. Today I saw Chris and Austin do that in six minutes mm. and I saw Sean Callaghy do it in one minute. That's elevated sales. Well done, everyone. Thank you so right. much. Great job, brother. Thank you. Uh, everybody, thank you. From um, Brad to Bella to Nick to Chris to Austin, Jacqueline, amazing day in the real raw. Couldn't thank you more. We'll be back on the huddle tomorrow morning. Everybody have a blessed and beautiful day. Thank you. Good luck.